So guys, so that is how your mobile actually looks like. So you need to be able to understand your standards to be able to bring about these issues, okay? These issues. Now, what you are likely to face in your exams, okay, let me try and conclude. What you are likely to face, and I don't want to skip that, let's talk some, let's talk about business risk because uh, inside the, the cases that you'll be having, you'll be asked to identify some risk. You'll be asked to identify some risk. And these risks are those ones that actually end up in your financial statement. Now let's, look, let's talk about uh, business risk. Business risk will fall under the inherent risk and 315 understanding, all right? Let's talk about that. Because we will come back to the control aspect, but let's focus more on the inherent aspect. Okay, now, business risk. You see, if a company is doing well, everything sounds so okay, all right? Everything is okay, it's perfect. Those of you who are doing uh, corporate reporting, you see that we talked about business reconstruction and stuff. If everything is okay, it's fine. But the moment you see some signs, it means that the business is actually going down, all right? Now, anything that actually brings damage to the company is business risk. Anything at all that brings damage to the company is business risk, okay? Now, when we talk about business risk, therefore, then it means that we are trying to talk about uh, any risk. So we are talking about risk um, that is actually probably resulting from, is resulting from significant conditions. Significant conditions. Events, significant events. All right, or let's say circumstances. Or let's say actions. Or inactions. What you do and what you don't do. That could adversely affect the business. Right. That said, we actually saying that anything, anything that brings the image of the company down, or anything that damage, anything that damages the company. Now we've actually talked about regulations, and if they don't. Uh, ISA 250 law and regulation. If the company does not comply, you see that if they are caught, it means there's penalties. You should be seeing penalties in their books, okay? If they are not caught, it means that they have to be providing for, for these penalties. Because I always say this to students, the company might think they are doing well out of their profit until GRE comes to do audit. Because when GRA comes to do audit, all the profits that you think you've been making prior years, when they come and do audit for, let's say, three years back, you see that the kind of tax that they will levy on you, eh? that one can, it can erase the profit that you think you have been making for those three years, all because of non-compliance. So you need to comply so that everything that comes out is actually through reflection, reflection of what you have. Because if you don't do that, you think you have money, you have profit, you have cash flow, GRA will come and take it out. Okay, so anything that you do that actually brings your company down is what we call business. Now, whenever in your exams, when you are faced with such questions, you'll be asked to identify some business risk, okay? And probably you, the auditor, what you are going to do to deal with this kind of thing. Now, 
I advise that you break down your, your answers into three categories, all right? So one, look at the financial aspect, the financial risk. Now, you will see that there will be issues on cash flow. Talk about it. There will be issues on, say, gearing, debt, debt issues. Talk about it. Those of you who have been doing, who I do the reconstruction with, you will see. You will see issues on uh, cost. Cost. You see that costs are actually going high. All right. And that is that. Okay. You will see issues like, you know, it, when we were doing the reconstruction, I told you that in this case, all you need to do is to use asset is equal to the elements of financial statement. You see that assets mismanagement, you will see it, it will be in the case. You will see gearing, what we've talked about here, the capital structure. Okay, Modigliani will tell you that the more you get geared, you, you are engaging in financial risk because Ghana is a typical example. Our gearing problem is, has taken us to a point where we've lost reputation, even in the market of borrowing. So when you see a company going in that trend, they actually face, they will be facing financial risk. Okay, these days, the credit rating agency have been rating us very, very down. So it means that when you go for additional borrowings, you will incur high cost. People will just be benefiting from us. That's what happened. Now, I also showed you guys about liabilities. Liabilities mismanagement. Okay. The creditors and all those stuff. All right. Then you will see income coming down, expenses going up. Okay. So those things, you will see them in your case. Also, the second part you can categorize your things is operational risk. Operational risk. This one, we are talking about loss of key staff. So you see in the cases, key staff, you see in, in the cases, people living and all those things, all right? You see cases, things of High labor turnover. High labor turnover. Machinery breakdowns. You see that they will be having some operational issues. Okay, some operational issues. So in your in the exams, try and fish those things out. Try and fish it out. Then you can also talk about compliance, compliance, all right? That one, we are talking about regulation. So regulatory risk. What every company has to do with tax authorities, what is their relations? Environmental authorities, EPA. Okay, so like multinationals will come to the nation and knowledge about the law is of high importance. Recently, my MD came to me talking about a client who has been complaining that he's not getting his tax clearance certificate, uh, withholding tax credit certificate from us. And I told them that these days, if you people have seen these days, GRE has gone technological. Everything is online. To the extent that for me, when people did that with holding tax for me and they remit to GRE, GRE automatically will credit my, my account. When you go to the Ghana.gov, the taxpayers portal, you see, I always see all the taxes people withhold on my payment being credited. I, Immediately they file. 
We go there, they say they don't print the papers anymore. And my MD asked me that, oh, the, the customer is, I said, oh, you should check his taxpayer's portal. He said, what is taxpayer's portal? And I said, oh, this is, I explained to him. My MD said, oh, the person who came is not a Ghanaian minor. And I said, oh, that one is not my job. He has to find somebody who understands the tax laws and understand the platform to get it. So, I mean, regulatory compliance is on you as the entity, okay? So that is that is something you are supposed to. So you see, you spot all these things from your case. I will send you a case and I will let you try your hands on it. So in the case, you say you see that you have to talk about business risk and not just about business risk. You need to also conduct some procedures, all right? So, uh, Hello, sir. yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah. The second bullet point on the compliance and the regulatory risk. So what is that? This one? Yes, sir. What Environmental is authority. Environmental authority. Environmental authorities. Okay, so let me let me before I, I conclude with documentation, let me just bring this thing up. And give you a bite of what I want to show you. I think that one, I'll have to close some things. I have to close some things to show it to you. Just a minute, okay. Okay, just have a feel of this. I'll send it to you. So these are where I pick some of these questions from. I'll say I'll share this to you. So we are talking about audit planning, right? So that is what we are talking about: the audit planning and the conduct of that. So you see that there is a manager, a question called. Red back. Now you will see, you go through the question. You are a manager in an audit department of Huntsman and Co., a firm of chartered accountants responsible for audit of several companies and evaluating acceptance decisions in respect of potential new audit clients. One of your audit clients, Red Back Sports Company, which operates a chain of sports and leisure centers across the country. The company has financial year ended 28 February 2018, and you are about to start. You are about to start. So you see what we've been doing, audit planning. You are about to start your audit. The Stella Cross, the audit engagement partner, met with the company's financial director last week to discuss the business development in the year and recent financial performance. In addition, Stella has been, in addition, Stella has been approved. Okay, let me just clean this off. Stella has been approved by Mike Emu, the managing director of Emu James Co. Company. That is Mike has inquired regarding whether Hartsman and Co. can provide the company with audit or limited assurance review. You should by this time know about limited assurance. And Stella would like to evaluate the request. Hartsman and Co. already provides a payroll service to Emu James company and has assisted Mike or make with his personal tax planning in the past. Mick also has a suspicion that several employees are carrying out fraud at the company. And he has asked that whether an audit or limited assurance review would have 
alerted him earlier to the situation. Now you have some questions, but that is not where I'm interested in. Uh, an email has come or has, I mean, an email you received from Stellar Cross in respect of the, of both Red Back Company and Emu Company. So that is the email. These emails are exhibits, all right? And it's not of a meeting. That one too is an exhibit. Extract from the latest management account. You have exhibit. So let's look at, this is the exhibit I want you to look at. So email from the audit engagement partner, audit manager, Stella Cross, and all those things. You see the subject of the day. I have provided you with some information in the form of number of exhibits, which you should use to help you with planning the audit of Red Book, Red Back Sports Company for financial year 20, ending 28 February 2019. Using the financial information in the exhibit. So we'll go back to the exhibit. I require you to prepare briefing notes for, for my own use in which one. So we, when you get the question, you see the exhibit, but the exhibit two and three, this is what the question is asking. Evaluate the business risk, eight marks. All right, that should be considered in planning the audit, the business risk. So you will see it. Then two, evaluate the risk of material misstatement. Please, you see, what are the composition of risk of material misstatement? What are, what are the two composition of risk of material misstatement? Yes, anyone, we just spoke about that. Anyone? When we say risk of material misstatement, there are two things. I told you audit risk is equal to risk of material misstatement and the auditor's inability to spot it. What are the two things that goes into risk of material misstatement? Yes, anyone? Anyone? Uh, yeah, try. The question again. Evaluate the risk of material misstatement. I'm asking, when we say risk of material misstatement, what are the two compositions that makes risk of material misstatement? What are the two things that makes risk of material misstatement? We just spoke about that today. I have to mute. So we just spoke about this today. Today. Where I told you guys that risk of material misstatements come from. Yes, Malik. Okay. It's uh, inherent risk. Control okay. risk. Thank you. So inherent risk plus control risk. So you see that what inherent risk is 18 marks. So what are the inherent risks you will spot? I told you, I gave you some things that you will see. Then control risk, internal control. What are some of the things that you will see? Okay, so these are what we are, that is how you go by your, your answering. Then the last bit is saying, what are the principal audit procedures? We've not done audit procedures. So I, I can I can uh, just spare you for that one. But that is how your exam is going to be. So by the time we finish this part of the syllabus and I send you this question, you should be able to provide me some. And that is how your exam is. It's purely here, it is application. We are not going to ask you what is. No, 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 no. We are going to apply them in cases, all right? So get ready for those, get ready. I just wanted to let you have a bite of what uh, you'll be facing. But let's go back to our board. Let's go back to our board. So you see in the question, it's talked about identification of business risk. So these are where you can fish the things out. And these are what you can talk about. It was eight marks. I think if you can, if you're able to fish these things out, you can even bring out about eight points.
All right. So that is that. So uh, before I let you go for today, I want to also tell you that. Mother come. After you've done all your planning, we've talked about uh, all the, uh, ISA 230 says that you have to document, so audit documentation. Remember when I began this class, I said we are looking at the audit of financial statement. And what the thing that we'll be talking about is planning, which is the planning and documentation. So I just want to finish on it. And next time, I will do a pre recording of the audit evidence and testing and finalization. So when we meet, by that time, you have gone through the lecture video and we will pick up the past questions, solve at least two on Thursday. All right. So audit documentation. Audit documentation. Now, all the documentation, ISA 230 says that all evidence must be documented. All the evidence that you gather must be documented. All your audit work, from your planning to your conclusion, they must be documented. All right. You just you have to state this if need be mm. okay, for some marks. Right. So what I what I'm we think what I'm we are saying is that record is just recording of your audit procedures. So record your audit procedures. Audit documentation is about recording your audit procedures that you performed. That you performed. And also your audit evidence, all right? Your audit evidence that you use to make your conclusions. All right, you need to record all of them. All right. So the standard actually says that the auditor shall prepare a, an audit documentation that is sufficient enough to enable any experienced auditor who has no uh, previous connection to that audit should under, to understand. So that is the object of this standard. So it says that you have to document you have to document your audit, okay? So the auditor shall, so it's a requirement, shall document. You shall document the audit, the audit. And your documentation should be sufficient enough, okay? It should be sufficient enough to the extent that any experienced auditor who has no previous connection to the audit that you have done can actually pick it and understand it, all right? So you have to audit, uh, I mean, document all your, your processes, okay? So, I mean, what are you documenting? Like all the things that we talked about, you, are, you document the nature, the timing, the nature, timing, and extent of the audit evidence that you had you need to document it okay so you also need to document all your audit procedures all your audit procedures that you use to gather evidence to gather evidence that you use to gather evidence you have to document any other significant matters that is of need. For example, when we were doing ethics, we said that even when the client gives you a gift that is material enough to, I mean, hinder your objectivity and you reject it, you need to document it, if you remember. 
the safeguard, you need to document it. Even when you rejected it, you need to document it. Okay. So that is it. So you document any significant uh, matters. You know, you know, document has to stay for like 10 years before they can be thrown away, all right? Before they can be thrown away. So you need to you need to document everything. All right. That is, I think the maybe the last thing I might have to talk about is I mean the the audit file and the audit file is where you are doing the documentation. You need to create a file, okay? The audit file, where you do your document. And in the audit file, there is a permanent file and there is a current file, all right? The permanent file uh, contains documents that are continuing of continuing importance, all right, for more than one year. Okay, so these ones are for con document, document things of continuing importance. So for example, if you are going to audit a client, you need to get the organogram and everything, the ownership structure and everything of the company. Okay, so that you don't go every year asking the same questions. All right, you need to have those things down unless there is a change. Okay, unless there is a change. So, for example, uh, if you have experience, you see that they will take your PPE register. Now, if there is no additions to PPE, it means you have the PPE register. Okay, you don't need to go there every year asking for it. No, no, no. no. How about? had experiences with Deloitte where I did a PP for them. They don't even come asking every year. All they need to ask is that when they addition, if there were additions, you just give them the documentation to the addition for the evidence and testing. That's all. Okay, the, the capital structure, which hardly changed. All right, those things uh in the permanent file like i said the directors and ownership and members all those things uh, list of bankers unless unless they've added new banks you already have their bankers every year okay every year all right letter of engagement if it is a private company letter of engagement mean is is you know, apart from your fees that you will discuss, they will be your auditor to, so you will remove them. Other than the public companies where the auditor's uh, time frame is at AGM to AGM, okay? So all those things. All these things must be in the permanent file, all right? In the current file, you have things or matters that are only regarding or relating to the current year only, the current year, all right? So that is that. So you take your letter of representation, letter of representation. Uh, we have something like uh, internal control, internal control weaknesses, in that particular year that you come to audit, you need to check them. Weaknesses. Okay. Yeah. Description of the new internal control. And any other thing. All right. That you need. So you just group them into um, current and permanent. All right, there are some things you know already. There are some things that are new. You need to now uh, bring it to play. If there are new staff, you, as you're engaging with them, you need to uh, get to know the new ones that are coming, all right? Yeah, so that is, that is um, audit plan and documentation. So I'll share with you the question. You need to start practicing, all right? You need to start practicing. Yeah, so I will do the pre-recording on the evidence and the analyzation. Then the moment we, we are moving into 
have questions solving in the area. So with your audit class, I'm hopeful to end it by the end of this month. Um, next month, which is November. I mean, anytime we, we will just be trying to prepare for the exam, solving more questions, all right? Okay, any question at this point? Any question at this point? Yes. 